first we start with agriculture as an engine of growth standard economic theory would tell you that as, as economies progress from lower middle income to middle and upper middle and upper income we vacate the primary sector and we graduate towards high-end manufacturing and then services but given what i showed you earlier about the way the global trades and the global growth is evolving and the kind of protectionism that is becoming rife Agriculture actually still carries a huge potential for driving growth if only we can make sure that the incentives are aligned and allied services in agriculture are also encouraged and land consolidation also happens in a big way because more than 85% of the land is only about 2 hectares or less. And this has been coming down. The average land holding size has been coming down since the 1970s. And this is an action area for state governments because mechanization and technology adoption are not economical under less than four hectares i believe economic survey 2007 wrote about it and that still remains true and that is also necessary for boosting the average yield in many crops in india which are at least about 20 to 40 percent below global levels whether you talk about tomatoes or onion or cotton or other vegetables, etc., we can do better. And in fact, we are not even comparing the global best in class. Even the average yield, there is a gulf. And if we can bridge this gulf, we not only ensure domestic food security, but also can become a very important global uh, exporter in the food area, which also gives us strategic advantages. And how rising yield we have given examples of few crops where the rising yield can actually take us uh, how much we can boost production if only we can improve the yield and bring it to the global average that is shown on the right side. Now, this chart you may have to remember when we come to the end of the presentation as well. This is the monsoon data until about 20th of July from June 1st. This is a 45 degree line, and if you are below the line, basically the rainfall is uh, on the deficient side. Some of the key areas which are very important for grain production are actually receiving deficient rainfall. If you look at the uh, IMD website, you see Southern Peninsula is very large surplus of about 26%, and uh, Northern Plains about minus 12, and also Eastern and Northeast about minus 14. So you see that the spatial distribution, and we have been writing about it in the monthly economic review, that we need temporally and spatially well distributed rainfall season. If that is not the case, then there will be question marks on the agricultural yield, etc. And that is why you will see this reflected in our growth outlook down the road. So, so far we say the monsoon season, barring a very few weeks in between, hasn't really lived up to the billing that we were looking for. And uh, talking of agricultural diversification, you can see that livestock, forestry and logging and fishing and aquaculture have recorded a much higher growth than the traditional crops. So ultimately, like farmers, like everybody else, respond to price signals and other incentives. So if we can make sure that uh, uh, through a combination of policies that we can actually give incentivize them taking up other areas of allied agricultural activities moving away from grains we will make our farming both remunerative climate friendly and also water friendly so this is the framework this is covered in detail in box five in a box in chapter five uh, I would urge you to go through that for more detailed elaboration of each and every one of these five aspects, which would help uh, making, which would help make sure that Indian farming sector becomes an engine of growth.